Thank you for tuning in to another Yost Built video. So, we have the slicks, we have the DA, and it's not done. What today's video is going to entail is mounting the slicks on the car, which I've already done, adjusting the coilovers, and adjusting the alignment so that we have a very proper track alignment done with simple tools at your house and not much money. So, like I said, this whole video series, the whole build in the DA, I do not recommend you do to your personal car. This is literally just for the Honda Build Challenge. In the last video I said, I'm gonna show up with the cheapest car. That's facts. I'm gonna show up with the only set of stock rods. That's facts. I'm gonna show up with the lightest car. That's facts as well. Um, so let's get into the video. Let's get into showing you my backyard technique on setting tow and exactly how I adjust the coilovers and uh, how I'm going to leave the car set up for the challenge. And I'm doing this all with the slicks, not with the street tires, because of course the offset and everything of the wheels is different, even though it should remain the same with your street tires. But I want to set the tow and everything to my specs, which I'll let you know what that is. And I'm going to show you. I've already done it. So it's just going to be a quick overview of how it's done and my simple technique of doing it. So, first thing you need to do. Take your stock wheels off. Get your slicks on the car. Get your car to the height you desire it. So, as you see here, you're going to see the wood laying next to the tire. You're going to see the tape measure right there on the floor. So, how I adjusted my max speed and coilovers not gonna be able to see it in there but so basically i took the bottom shackle spun it all the way up on the coilover and found out that the coilover actually doesn't go that low on this car which i found out that they're the wrong coilovers these are apparently eg coilovers but they bolt up at the top but the bottom uh, thing that goes around the axle which is the, the fork doesn't actually fit so I've drilled a hole through them and mounted a bolt so that it's actually mounted to the bottom of the shock um, I adjusted it all the way up which got me to the height you see here and then I took the spring spun it until it started to preload put one full turn in it and that's how I set my front coils the rear coils I'm not gonna touch they have two turns of preload on them and the bottom pieces are turned halfway and you see how it sets so now the toe that's the important thing when you're setting these cars up toe is everything you think about the front suspension as two parallel lines basically when the car goes to take off the wheels are going to try to push themselves apart because you're trying to pull the car, you know, try to pull the car with the tires. So what you want to do, or at least how I do it, is I set the car up with an eighth of an inch of toe in. So I basically point the wheels in at each other so that when the car takes off, the wheels go straight. Now, if you have a really old suspension and you have a lot of bad bushings, you'll have a lot of forgiveness in your suspension. So it'll be a lot of movement. That is not good. The car's not going to hook well. Now, if you have traction bars like the DA, you can go all the way down to basically straight. So zero toe in or out. And the car should, quote unquote, should, as long as everything else is perfect, go straight. Now, like I said, this is going to be a very broad overview of suspension setup and everything. So in case of that, we have the Juke setting here. The Juke has zero toe. But... I don't race the Juke on slicks, and the Juke has brand new suspension. Everything on the car is brand new. It's not even, well, not brand new, but it when I first got it, it had 20,000 miles on it. So the bushings, everything should be particularly good. You know, as the car gets older, of course, you're going to get to play in the suspension. When I was driving around on my Federal Radials, you could feel the front suspension move when you got onto the brakes hard or when you got onto the gas hard. It wasn't wheel hop, but it was actually the, the, the bushings turning because now the tire is better than the OEM suspension bushings. Same concept with a slick. You're gonna have the ultimate grip. It's literally 
zero tread wear. It's a slick. So the weak link of your car is going to be the bushings, the control arms, the ball joints. There's going to be a lot of things you have to pay attention to. Um, on the DA, I've replaced the camber kits with uh, Engel camber kits, which are some of the best on the market. It already had upper control arms that were adjustable. I checked everything. They're pretty good. They're not perfect, but they're pretty good. Uh, the lower bushings are stock, but they're not dry rotted and missing. So the front suspension on this car should be fine. The rear, uh, probably right at the point of where I should replace the bushings, but they'll work for now. You know, I'm not planning on this car being anything spectacular. So, you know, my goal personally, if you're gonna watch this video and you're gonna watch me with all this talking, my goal personally is to out 60 foot everybody, rear wheel drive cars, I mean all wheel drive cars and all. Tree everybody. As you guys have watched me race a lot. I have more seat time than pretty much anybody I know than this challenge. I race the Juke a lot, I bracket race a lot, I've raced the CSX a lot, I've raced the Spirit RT a lot, I've raced my brother's Fiat. I literally will race any car. I've ran my boy's Focus, I've ran SIs, I've ran, you know, my mom's GTO. I will literally drive anything if they let me drive it at the track. A funny story is I've raced a smart car at the track. I've raced a Mini Cooper at the track with a CVT. It was the slowest thing ever. It went 19 something. Still went to like the second round in bracket racing. I actually broke out and went too fast in a Mini Cooper. Bracket racing is bracket racing. But let me show you the quick technique. So my ghetto toe in 101. I have these three boards straight here, straight here, and the jack holding against it. So this is firmly against the tire here, firmly against the tire here. I take my tape measure. Slide it under this board because we're basing it off of this, this to this. Now, once you take the air out of the slicks, of course, this will change. If you want to do this perfect, you actually need to do it off the face of the rim. But with this technique, with the car on the ground, you want the car as loaded. So technically, this is the weight that the car was going to be setting at the starting line on minus the driver. So the car's loaded. Now, you come on the other side, this jack is free. It's not touching the subframe of the car. You come on this side of the car, you take your wood, you put your, some pressure against it, and then you measure. It's 70, and um, I already did it before the video. Oh, it's 70 and one quarter. On this back side right here, I have 70 and one eighth. So, that means that you have an eighth of an inch. So the difference from the front to the back is one eighth of an inch. And if you look at this wheel, it's pretty good. You look at this wheel, it's pretty good. Now the rears, I literally used an app on my phone to set the camber. And you can see, there's literally zero camber. Now, you could take this to an alignment shop, of course, they'll charge you $40 the front and forty dollars for the rear or with the simple tools loosening up the tight rod ends adjusting it you can do your own alignment this is just my little backyard way of doing it um, if you have street tires you actually can take the tape measure and just stick it in the groove of the street tire you know these are slick so there's no grooves but if you stick it in the groove of the street tire the equal groove on both sides front and rear you can set the alignment as well so that's my little base overview this is how the DA is looking right now. Uh, I need to give it a bath, which I'm gonna do here in a minute, and then uh, finish the motor. I do need to put the nitrous kit on it, but I do also need to put the water lines, the radiator, and everything else in the car. So this is gonna be a video of a lot of me talking and a little bit of action, because I already did the whole thing. 